Right guys, we are going to have a quick transfer debate. We have got Drinkwater, McCullough and Housen with us. We're going to be talking about if we're going to sign anyone, who we're going to sign, what's going on in January. So the first question is, will we sign anyone? Mac? I don't think so. Video over. Done. Finished. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you very much. That's it. Um, <laughs> so you don't think so? Um, Gaz? I don't, I, genuinely, um, I, don't, I don't think we'll sign anyone unless we pull off like a signing from like a Sadio Mane from Southampton or someone that's already in the Premier League. I can't see us getting any of our big targets from no, from no. abroad. So I don't think anything major will happen. And do you agree with that, Gaz? <laughs> yeah, I can't see anything happening now. Um, there's not been enough sort of... I know the press speculation most of the time is absolute nonsense, but oh, yeah. there's been when there's this little of it, really, this month, you sort of assume that there is must be nothing... <laughs> coming out at all from United so I can't see us signing anyone we may be in for a couple of players but I very much doubt that they're huge massive names I have a feeling that Louis van Aal might have a defender up his sleeve that he's after maybe a fullback but I don't think we're actually going to get them in January and I reckon maybe we're laying down the uh, groundwork for our signings in the summer possibly maybe making yeah, a few contacts at clubs you know like Felipe Anderson that's a signing that I could see happening in the summer um, there's a couple that I can't really see happening, but I would love to happen in the summer. Uh, that's Romelu Lukaku. What a player he is. I think he'd fit us really well, well as well. We're not and talking oh, about the summer, mate. We're talking about January. Yeah, we talk yeah. about summer. It'd be going on for ages, mate. I know. And, and it's, it's a shame, really, because we really could do with the, uh, the squad being updated now a little bit. Just a couple more signings, even just a defender, just so we can start playing daily. Blint in midfield would help. And I said this on a, uh, on a daily the other day, and... Um, if we got a defender now that was, and don't laugh at a minute, if he was as good as Phil Jones, what? but he wouldn't, wasn't getting injured every other week and he could actually get a good run of games together and we could get him for under 20 mil, I'd take that because I think Phil Jones is actually a, a decent player if he got the run of games, but he never can. If we got a defender of that ability who's not injury prone, who has, who, you know, has a good fitness record, then I think that would improve us a lot. Well, Housen told us before we recorded that we've already signed someone. I haven't heard of this. Who is he? Is he the defender that Gaz is talking about? He is a defender. Is he? He is Italian. He's called Erko Lani, but he's only 16, so I would have thought <laughs> oh. there's, uh, there's much chance of seeing him in the first team That's in the next, no one's heard I don't know, five years or something. Do you think we'll sign anyone else in January? I think we will sign somebody, yeah. Um... I agree with Gazza, there's not a lot of smoke at the moment, but I think the, the managerial speculation of wh whether Van Gaal was going to keep his job um, sort of derailed a lot of that speculation a little bit. Uh, and I also think that if you look back to summer, there was only Memphis that we knew about really well in advance, and that was because PSG leaked it. Mm. Um, Schweinsteiger and Schneidlin, we knew about them three, four days before at most. Damian came on us a couple of days mm. before. He did what uh, and then Marshall broke on the day, didn't it? So <laughs> I think we can easily be well underway with sorting a deal out. Um, I'm disappointed that we didn't sort anybody out prior to the window opening. So as soon as it opened, mm. we just went, bosh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why we're like, oh, the window's open now. Let's start shopping. I think that's a, a silly way to do business when we clearly desperately need first team players who can start, not players for the future, not people that have potential, but... 25, 26, 27, 28 year old players who might not be world class but are going to come in and bolster up the squad because as we've seen with the injuries at the moment we're relying on Cameron Balfwick Jackson who even myself as, as somebody who watches the youth a lot didn't think he's a first team player next year um, yeah, his name we, we brought Yanazai back nowhere, really. so that's give us someone else that we can use in the wings Pereira should be starting but we need some decent Premier League standard mid, uh, midfielders maybe even a forward in um, I think two or three signings of mid-table Premier League standard would be really good for the squad. Whether or not we can get them, I don't know. OK, so Gaz has said that we need a consistent defender. Housen's saying we need midfielders. Not, not talking about specific people at the minute, but Mac, what areas do you think need strengthening? What, I agree, with, what do I we agree with both of those. I thought we should have bought a centre-half in the summer, to be honest. That's just gone. Because mm. um, we always felt that our defence wasn't strong enough had we picked up an injury or two. And, and Phil Jones is always injured, so there's your injury. 
Um, and we do need cover there. We've had to call up youngsters a lot. And I think Luke Shaw's injury as well has set us back a lot, which it shouldn't do, but it has. Um, so we need cover there. We need, I still think we need something on the wings. Um, our wing players, if you look at them, we've got Juan Mata, not a winger. Mm. Um, he's too slow to be out there. It's like he's treading water at times. And while he does have his good games in that inverted winger position, he, more often than not, he, he doesn't look great out there and he needs to go into the middle to be effective. Um, so we need someone out wide. Our wingers aren't good enough. Our wingers aren't of the quality that we're used to at Manchester United. And that's the biggest area of concern for me. Uh, so the, the main problem is in, in January, are you going to get, even with talking about we'll people like, like Mane? I, said, I don't think we'll sign anyone, Ian. Um, if we sign someone, I think it'll be Asad or Mane maybe or someone like that. But I don't think we'll make any of these signings that we really want to see. And I mean, it, it's January, isn't it? That's what happens. Mm. Well, that's, so my next question is, who do you think, if we could sign anyone, who at the quality that we could get, do you think would be available in January? I get not this level, but you talk about Charlie Austin was someone who Southampton <gasps> could get. Not not for us, but you know, he's someone who will transfer. Whereas like, if you wanted to yeah. sign Barkley or Lukaku, the, the chances of them moving in January are so slim. The TV money as well doesn't help. I mean, mm. teams don't need to sell anymore. Yeah. They, they, don't have, they, like, yeah. they don't need to sell for the money anymore because well, they know they've got Leicester that. would get like, torn apart after this season. All mm. their best players would go, kind of like how, what happened with Southampton. But you I think, that, think that no one's available of, of good quality, really. And there's a lot then, of times in January where United have signed players that when they've joined the club, not necessarily anyone's heard of as well, mm. that, you know, from, from the European leagues, Nemanja Vidic being the one that really springs to mind. And I'm not just saying it because his name ends in an itch, but um, Dragovic seems like a player who's available and wouldn't yep. fit that mould of the defender that we could be after, um, who maybe wouldn't get injured anywhere near as much as the likes of Marcus Rowe or Phil Jones and could give us a bit more freedom going forward because he'd shore up that defence because he's actually a defender. Um, so, you know, that's the sort of player that we'd be going after. And I'm sure there are loads of other players that we could get from around Europe that, quite frankly, I don't have a bloody clue about because I don't watch, like, the bloody Russian league or the uh, or the Ukrainian league or anything like that. Well, but that, I'm sure there are other the players available. To, to do, really, in, in the January market is to have a good scout who's spotting exactly. people like Mares, who... Not people. People don't know about as much, but I don't know. Mahrez United costs have that mentality grand. at the minute. Yeah, oh, it's incredible. I I think Woodward and Van Hal are both a bit obsessed with getting big names instead of getting people who are right for the club. But I I don't think necessarily Van Hal is responsible for all of our transfer um, activity, and I think that's what the problem is. Ed Woodward keeps going for this Galactico style signing and. Yes, traditionally Manchester United do make big signings. We do spend money on players, um, but we don't. We very rarely sign your ready-made world stars, and and when we do, it doesn't always be successful. Look at Farca, look at Di Maria. They weren't successful. Um, I mean, the best players at Manchester United have been players that we've nurtured, and they've been rough diamonds. We polished them off, and they've been amazing at the end. If you look at Ronaldo when we signed him, he was a one-trick pony. He was crap. He was never going to make it. And then he became a Ballon d'Or winner. Mm. If you look at Do you remember Wayne when Bruni, Ronaldo had no product? Yeah. That was the that thing he, everyone used to say. Couldn't no one product for Ronaldo. Score. I thought you meant hair product when you said that. I was like, why is <laughs> oh, no, it, it came with plenty of that. Oh, yeah. Um, we're going to talk, um, before, before we go, about departures. I've got a feeling that Fellaini's name is going to come up. And he has been linked with a potential move to AC Milan. Do you think we're going to lose any players? Is there people who you want to go, think should go? Um, what do you think is going to happen? I think maybe a couple, there's a chance of a couple of youngsters maybe going out on loan. Um, I think if a loan bid came in for Pereira, I think we'd let him go as well. And I think it'll be good for the player as well since we're not playing him enough, even though for me, he would be playing. He would actually be playing, but um, it's obvious that he's not going to get the game. Same with what happened with Wilson. So if he's not going to play, let him go out on loan. Um, in terms of players getting sold, yeah, those rumours about Fellaini don't seem to be going away, do they? And if, you know, a bid was to come above £8 million, then maybe you'd accept it. And that, that's only... say that we want 19, guys. 
19 million. And the only reason well, we want that is because... 30. Exactly. That's the only reason we want that sort of money because we paid so much on him. But um, he's not worth 19 million. He's worth about eight at most. So I think if a bid comes in over eight, over 10... You'd accept it and let him go, but I don't I think, think there's any I chance of Lou Van Aal letting him go. How old how is Fulani? Because he's maybe worth more than eight. Yeah. AC Milan has shit these days, isn't it? But yeah, how far have slipped when I was growing up? AC Milan had Tracy and Maldini and George Weir and Desai and Roberto Cassie. Baggio. Dida. And now they're signing Fellaini off Man United. It's a shame. But like oh, Gazza said, yeah, the Mario rumors, Balotelli. So the rumours do seem to be that a lot about Fellaini, um, which... If there was a if there was a lot of truth to that, it doesn't make any sense why he was playing um, first choice for us. Yeah, if that's a good the manager point. knew that he was going to be sold, so I, I have to think that there's probably not too much in that, unless his agent knows that he's going to be out of favour as soon as everyone's fit and he wants to move him on, and he's he's making all the noise, which is entirely possible. And it apart seems from like that, you're jumping I don't on the see anyone going. You know, when because a lot of people don't like Fellaini at United. And it seems like the press, are may, they maybe stir that up a bit. Yeah, of, possibly. Of the, the, there are bids for him because they know that he's, he's good news, basically, because he represents everything that some United fans don't like about United. So it could just be completely made I've got no issue with having Fellaini in the squad because I think he does offer something different, but I don't want to see him start in games mm. when I think there's better players at the club in the position that we're playing him. It's a legacy that David Moyes has left at the club. <laughs> so, guys, I mean, that's it. We've, we've pretty much, we've pretty much absolutely we've... dealt with transfers and it Not seems to be no one's leaving and no one's coming. Exciting! <laughs> that's Apart what we've from, done. Uh, whoever... Anti-clickbait. <laughs> Pereira might be going on loan. So, yeah, thanks for, thanks for sticking around for all the, the hot exclusive gossip we've done. Um... The Do inside. leave your comments below. Let us know if you think anyone should be leaving, if we should be signing someone. People like Dragovic, you think we should be getting him? If he's available, let us know. Subscribe to Full Time Devils and come visit our houses if you've got our addresses. Welcome to Full Time Devils. I'm Adam McCullough. Today we are at the News UK building as we are special guests on the Dream Team FC podcast with Jay Buckley, aka Jay from In Between Us, and Jaleel. 